Hey everyone, this is Lola Reddy from Abstract Music Lab and today I'm giving you away my mixing template so you can use it to your mixing sessions as well and this way you can take the most out of your mixing sessions. So let's dive into it. I'm going to explain a little bit of how it works and I hope you can apply it to your projects as well. So yeah, let's dive in. So today we're going to talk about my mixing template as I said before and I'm going to explain all the channels in here so you can if you're not an Ableton user you can also replicate this into your project into your DAW as well so yeah first let's start with these first channels so these pink channels these are normally reference tracks okay these reference tracks they are there because I want to be able to pull in reference tracks and be able to toggle them one, two, three. You can see that if I press one, it toggles the first one, two, and three. Let's say I have five, then I would probably map the four and the five as well to the fourth and five reference track. And the reason why I have them there is because I want to quickly be able to listening to my, let's say I'm listening to the drop, okay? And I have my drop over here. So I want to be able to check the reference track, my track, the reference track, my track, okay? And well, these are the reference tracks. Let's move downwards. Let's first, I'll, I'll leave this channel over here later. Okay, now talking about the master. Why do I have my tracks master inside a channel and not in the project's master? So basically, I don't want these channels to be external outs. External outs are tracks that go directly to your sound card. Okay, they don't pass through this mastering chain over here. And the reason why I don't want this is because sometimes I use plugins like Ozone Equalizer, which have, uh, they have something like an EQ match. And I need to be able to pass the audio through the plugin. And then, because then I'll be able to do what they are there for. So that's why I have this over here. And since I don't want the reference tracks to be affected by the mastering chain, that's why I have to create a separate master. So this way, all the channels below here go to the master. All the channels in orange, this one, this one, this one, this one. And lastly, this one, they go directly to the mastering chain. These are the buses from, these are the, the track buses that I have, okay? Then you have the kick bus, the drum bus, the break bus, drop bus, bass bus, effects bus, vox bus, and vox full bus. They all serve a purpose. They are all there for a reason. And that's why I'm going to, that's what, how, what I'm going to explain right now. So the kick bus, kick and sub bus, well, they pretty much tell by the name, but the kick and sub bus, they are the sub, the kick and the sub bus. I only put kick and sub over there. These are the elements that play around 50 Hertz, depending on the track's key, depending on the kick's key. And so that's why I want to have them side by side so I can, I'm able to listen to them only and exclusively to them without having to solo a track from one bus and solo a track from another bus. So this way, kick and sub, they are the only elements that play that low in the spectrum analyzer. So that's why I want to have them separately in one channel. Okay. So let's move to the drum bus. The drum bus is simple. Everything that's a drum, but it's not a kick. As I said before, the kick drum and the sub, they, they have their own group because they play around 50 hertz. So everything that doesn't play around 50 hertz goes into the drum bus. Everything over here goes to the drum bus. So everything here is being routed to this drum bus and this drum bus is being routed to the master. And the same happens to all the other channels. And this way, if I place an effect here, effects here on top of the drum, so let's say I want to add a reverb. By doing this, all the drums, all these channels over here would be affected by this reverb, okay? And sometimes I place this reverb over here. Sometimes I place a, like a room reverb on top of all the drums. So that's why I have all the drums into one group, okay? And now moving to break and drop group. Okay, what is break and drop group? So basically break is everything that plays mainly in the break and drop everything that plays mainly in the drop. I'm gonna show you one of the projects later and you're gonna see that how I, sometimes I have, let's say your break starts over here and then you have another drop over here just to make it easy that goes up to here. 
let's say you have a channel that plays mainly in the drop, okay, that plays mainly over here, but also has some bits in the break, then I'd place this in the drop bus, okay? If you want to be really precise with it, let's say you have a, a channel at this long, boom. This is the, the drop part, this is the break part. Some, what you can do is you can double this part, put this one here, and then you delete the drop parts, and then you delete the break part from, from this one. So you have the break, everything that's break related to the break, everything that's drop related to the drop group. Why I do this? Sometimes I do some specific adjustments to the break group, sometimes I do some specific adjustments to the drop group, and then we move to the base group. What is the base group? Well, the base group is everything that is a base that plays the same thing as the base, but it's not the sub, okay? Since the sub is there playing with the kick, I'm leaving it there, but all the other base elements are going here in the base group, okay? So mid bases, drone bases, break bases, everything that's base related goes here into the base group, okay? Moving on, effects. What are effects? Effects are there to create tension and release. So you have risers, you have wide noise, down sweeps and up sweeps, symbols, up sweeps and down sweeps, impacts, a lot of everything that is there to create tension and release goes into the effects group. Then we go to the vox and then we have two vox groups. We have vox full and we have vox. Vox group is everything that it's Vox related, so chops, ambiences, up sweeps, down sweeps, but it's a Vox related things. And everything is from a sample pack or from somewhere else that it's not vocal recorded. All the recorded Vox come here in the Vox full group. All these buses, they go here into the Vox full and the Vox full go later to the master chain, okay? Vox dry, as it says, it's the dry vocal. Vox return is the all the return channels that you put in your Vox. Okay. Vox AV is Vox altered voices. So high pitched Vox, low pitched Vox, Vox effects, everything that you put in the in the Vox that is a delay or is a um, creative delays instead of regular delays that stay on all the track. And Vox ambiences, sometimes I place them inside the Vox full, sometimes I place it outside the Vox full. It depends from track to track. But these are the O's and A's and shouts that I wash a lot with reverb afterwards. And lastly, in the Vox full, I place my vocal reverb and delay chain, which you can see links to the post that I've made, I've written about it here in the description below. And I'm gonna show you now one of my projects so you can see how everything it's worked. So let's move into one of the tracks that I've worked on and so you can see this mix template in action and you'll be able to see it right now. So we're here into one of the mixing projects that I've been working on. It's something that I've just finished and it's really, really fresh. So you can see now how do I apply all the stems from the projects, from the creation project now into the mixing project. And now you can see it, how it works. So as you can see, I have, let's start with the Vox group. You can, I have the Vox Dry, Vox Return, Vox AV, Vox Effects, and Vox Ambiences over here. Okay, all these channels, they are being routed to the Vox full, which has the effects chain here, the delay and reverb Vox chain on. Later, we have this Vox channel over here. This are all the ambiences, as I said, that are coming from sample packs, and that's why they have their own group. Then I have all the tension builder elements. So as you can see, a lot of these elements are mainly just there to create tension and release. Well, now moving into the bass group, as you can see here, I have all the bass elements. And as you can see, I have a VST over here. I'm not supposed to add VSTs to the mixing project, but the reason why I added it is I just wanted to go and quickly do it. I just didn't want to go back to the creation project. Sometimes I do add some VSTs, but I try to keep it as like less possible to avoid overthinking stuff. But these two channels over here, they are basically doing the same as this one. I just wanted to separate uh, something inside the bass drone. Then I also have all the drop elements. As you can see, they play mainly inside the drop. These are the drop here and here and here. That's why they have their own group. The break group, it has all the elements that mainly play inside the break, but as you can see, they play as well a little bit in drops. If you want, as I've done here before, since I wanted a different treatment for this one than for that one, because if you just extend this, 
they are the same channel okay but you can see that this one is at minus 5 db this one is at 0 db so that's why i wanted to separate them and you can say leo but you can just do this with a volume automation tool and i say yeah but just double them it's the same and well he the here are the drum groups so basically all the drums from the track besides the kick and the sub which are here so you have the sub from drop one sub from drop two and also the kick and lastly they are all being routed to the master chain where again as i said i have it all over here because over here i'm gonna have my matching tool where i'm gonna do all the last checks of my mix and my master and this is my mixing template okay when you open this template what's gonna happen to you when you open this template it's gonna be completely full to you and then you're gonna ask why there's this channel 4 over here and the channel 4 the only reason why it's there it's because i want to be able to pull in all of the stems that i've rendered from a track so these are all the stems that I want to render from a track. I can easily pull them, them in without having to add another channel so I don't miss up the, all the arrangement, all the design thinking that I've done over here. And here, all the base group are going to the base elements. Everything from the break elements are going to the break group drop to the drop drums to the drums and everything and this way i'm quickly i'm able to quickly pull in all the uh, stems for from the the creation project into the mixing project and afterwards they're going to look as you've seen in the previous project okay this works with ableton with ableton 10.1 and above if you don't use ableton you can quickly redo this into all daws you just have to create this routing so drums to a drums bus break to a break bus drop to a drop bus brace to a bass bus and you can download this mixing template here in the description below and you'll be able to get this yourself and apply this to your projects as well let me know if you like this video let me know if you like this concept of having a separate mixing template or if you mix your projects directly in the creation project and if so why do you do this leave in the comments below i hope you like this video click in the, li the like button click and subscribe button and i hope to see you in the next video Cheers.